Hello and good morning. John Reagan here on Sunday in the E Dash Power Sport Garage. And uh, just wanted to come to you this morning and go over a few things. Uh, not really ranty, but I mean, you see, I'm already done with my coffee. I'm on to the sports drink um, for the rest of the day. But uh, yeah, some just some interesting things came out. I mean, we have the, uh, the electric XP Lite, which has been out for a bit now. and. I don't know, there's some mixed reviews. Uh, some people have, you know, jumped on the videos we did and said, oh, you're so wrong, this is perfect, it's light, it's less expensive, somewhat. It's perfect for what I need. And fine, if that's you, good. Then they hit that market for you, they got you what you need, and that's what's important, right? Um, some other people have come back and said, yeah, I see what you're saying, it's just trimmed down, they could have done it cheaper, they could have, you know. So I think it's a two-school system there. <laughs> there's... There's definitely uh, uh, some some differences there, some polarization in between that. But um, even more so, they came out recently with the X Premium, which is uh, an interesting bike on its own right, or in its own right. Um, first of which, having dual batteries. I think dual batteries are great. Um, we've been looking at different units that have dual batteries, especially um, in the e what I call the e-bike configuration. Um, our e-enduros tend to have large enough battery packs that Carrying an extra battery would just be a lot of weight, um, but you could. Uh, and then our e-motorcycles that we're selling, those, I mean, you can get extra batteries for those. They have pretty long, long distance ones. And because their size, um, they have the greatest potential right now for going uh, LifePo 4 earlier, sooner. Um, and they have uh, better capacities in, in that uh, type of material. So, <clears throat> I like the dual battery setup. I think the X Premium uh, having dual batteries is really cool. Um, now, the mid-drive aspect is interesting to me. I understand it's their first mid-drive. Um, and that's, you know, we have a mid-drive here. We have the Watt Wagons. And it's my first mid-drive, actually, um, other than like a regular motorcycle. <laughs> uh, but my first mid-drive. And it's an interesting experience. Um, we've... The, the whole ride experience versus a hub motor is very different. And uh, I think it's interesting because a lot of people have always said to me, you know, oh, when you ride a mid-drive, it's so much more natural, it's so much more normal. But uh, I, I think it's quite the opposite, personally. <laughs> the uh, the mid-drive seems to have this urge to take over things um, as you're pedaling and, and because of how it's set up, it also really wears heavily on the gears. Uh, something that was a big concern of mine when we started this business, uh, when it came to using the, the mid drive motors versus the hub motors on units. And so if you go online, Micah just released a, a little bit ago, a how to ride a mid drive bike. Um, which is funny to me because if something's more natural than another, it would seem to me you wouldn't need to tell people how to ride it, right? So <laughs> with that in mind, um, I'm going to converse to a lot of what people say and go with hub motors are actually a more natural feel when you ride the bike. It's more, and by that I don't mean like the bicycle effect, but I mean the expectation of what you are what you're experiencing, what the experience is going to be, right? Um, it's not dependent on the gears. The gears are in the hub motor a lot of time. Um, you know, that's all for you. So you're adding power and depending on what gear you're in, you're adding whatever power into the motor, right? So unlike a uh, mid drive, which takes the power from here, using the gears, transferring it into the, into the wheel, your hub drive spins at the wheel and then adds any additional power that you're putting in into the cogs, right? So you don't have to worry about things like popping, right? If you're in your mid drive on your mid drive and you're riding along and you go in this lowest gear and it starts ka -dunk, ka -dunk, ka -dunk, you need to get out of that gear because you're ripping that gear up, right? And I've already experienced that on the Hydra. A big reason for that is because they have high torque ratios. So uh, the motor in the Hydra produces 160. To, I think 180 newton meters of torque and that gear setup is and the derailleur is not designed to handle what is essentially moving into motorcycle levels of power um so yeah it just doesn't 
translate well. And so you get a lot of, you get a lot of uh, symptoms that can become real issues. Uh, likewise with the chains on a mid drive, that was another one of our big concerns, which is why we, we require them to use really high end chains. Uh, the chains tend to stretch, pop and break uh, a lot easier because of all that stress and tension, right? So when you go into a hub drive motor, all that stress and tension, pardon me, is in the spokes, okay? So you wanna have good solid spokes. That's the, <laughs> that's the big concern with the hub drive motor. You don't have to worry about the drive train as much itself as these need to be good and strong. So to me, when I look at the two, and especially with as far as hub drives are coming now, um, I really think that hub drives are a smoother, more expected experience than what people get on a mid drive, right? The fact that somebody like Micah Toll with Electric has to, or sorry, he's not an Electric, it was the e bike school one, um, has to release a, a how to ride your bike video just indicates to me that there's a lot of, there's a bigger learning curve and it's not as natural as people tend to say. So, Moving back to the X Premium, <laughs> I think that the market they have and the people that they have marketed to to this point um, may find riding the X Premium a little rough. I think that they will have to learn, right, as, as indicated in the video by Micah, how to ride that. Um, and that's okay, right? If it's something you're looking for, I think that's great. You know, dual batteries is awesome. You ride it right, you're gonna get 100 miles in a char in a fully charged unit. Keep in mind, it's gonna take you twice as long to charge those unless you plug them both in at the same time. Because um, they're batteries, right? You have to charge them up, it takes time. Um, but I think the, the other thing I wanted to talk about was we've actually been looking at building something similar. Um, and I've had some recent issues with bikes coming in from our suppliers that have really kind of started to push us in the, we may have to make these ourselves direction. Um, not that I really wanted to, uh, but finding good quality and consistent quality um, has been a little more difficult, right? They come in a few times, they're great, and you sell them and it's wonderful, and then you get one in, two in that you're like, what is this? <laughs> so. It becomes more consistent when you can do it yourself, obviously. Um, and we'll work with them with them as suppliers. But um, one of the units we've been looking at is a uh, step-through foldable as well as a solid step-through that, similar to the XP, carries uh, one large battery, potentially two batteries. Um, one model we're looking at uses a mid-drive motor, uh, a different mid-drive motor than a Bofang, though, actually. I found this company that has a lower power consumption, higher torque motors. So for 250 to 350 watt motors, you can get 120 to 140 newton meters of torque. So the way they do that is through gear reductions and the weight isn't uh, significantly increased. So there's not a big loss there either. So what that means for you is once we're producing these, you'll be able to get a bike that uses less power out of your battery pack, gets you that same oomph of acceleration you're looking for, move you up the hill. Um, obviously, hopefully work out the numbers, cost a little less. And um, <clears throat> is a, is a mid-drive, uh, nice, either foldable or solid step-through unit. Um, and that's, that's, we've been working on this for a bit now, and it takes a while to put these things together to actually put them together to find frames, to find motors, to find the parts and the wheels and all this stuff so that you can assemble it yourself takes a while. And I, I hope to do this further down the line after we opened our first location and stuff, like within six months to a year. But uh, in order to maintain quality for all of you and make sure that the things we send you are consistent, uh, it does look like we may have to take on some role of assembly and manufacture here in the US a lot sooner than later. So, I mean, that's really all I gotta say. I think the X Premium is a good attempt. Um, I just, you know, for me, it seemed a little standard and then the pricing's good. I mean, I can't complain, $17.99 uh, for dual battery packs and a mid-drive motor is pretty solid. You know, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think it's a good direction. I think it's the right direction. The question is, 
how will it be received and then how will people that have had the hub drive motors and experience that adapt to the mid drive rides so um yeah there's nothing major today just going over a couple little points uh hub drives mid drives the experience of riding each and you know a couple of bikes that are out with them so thanks <laughs>